Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining me today. This is Brother John, and today in this video, I want to take a look at a particular time period, okay? A time period on this earth when there was a moral crisis taking place. Now, we take a look at Genesis chapter 6 and verse 5. We read, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Now, when Adam and Eve first sinned, okay, which was the very first sin to be committed by mankind, it started a downward spiral of sin that just kept getting worse and worse. All right, Cain, for example, was the first one in the Bible to commit murder when he killed his brother Abel. And as the earth became more and more populated, then the evil, wickedness, and immorality just increased. Okay, in fact, it got so bad that it actually grieved God that he had made man in the first place. So we see how God dealt with this problem, okay, in Genesis chapter 6 and verse 7, where it says, And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. Now, most of you probably remember what happens next. Okay, this is where God speaks to Noah and tells him to build an ark so that he and his family can be spared from this devastating flood that he will send to destroy every one and everything that is on this earth. Now, a lot of skeptics these days will try to diminish the severity of this great flood, okay? There have actually been some people that have suggested that this flood was more of a local flood, okay? And that it didn't actually cover the entire earth. But if that was the case, then why did Noah even have to build an ark? All right, if God had really intended for this flood to cover only a small insignificant area that Noah could have just picked up his family and moved, okay, to an area where they would not have been affected, where they wouldn't have been affected by it. All right, there also wouldn't have been a need to take two of every animal if this was just going to be a local flood. Now, um, Ken Ham wrote a book entitled A Flood of Evidence in which he examines a lot of the questions that people are asking these days about Noah's Ark and the validity of the biblical account. And there's also a lot of great videos on this subject that you can find on the Answers in Genesis YouTube channel. So I would really encourage everyone listening to take some time and do some of your own research on this topic because this is definitely one of those subjects that non-believers and skeptics just love to grill us about these days. But as Christian believers, we know it to be true, okay? And there's actually a lot of scientific and archaeological evidence to back up the fact that this flood was indeed a global flood and not a local flood, okay? But the biblical account of Noah gives us a very clear picture regarding God's nature, all right, God is a loving God and a patient God, okay? We know that. His word tells us that. But he is also a holy God and a just God. And just as he dealt with those people in Noah's time, and just as he dealt with the inhabitants of Sodom and Gomorrah, so also will he deal with any depraved society that has turned their back on him and refused to put their trust and faith in his son Jesus Christ. So that leads us to the question, just how depraved and how corrupted does our society have to become before God finally says, enough? Now Jesus tells us in Matthew 24, verses 37 through 39, but just as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, 
They were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Noah and his family were the only ones who were ready for what was coming, okay? God told Noah his intentions, and Noah was obedient to God and got right to work on that ark. In fact, based on what Scripture tells us, most scholars today agree that it probably took anywhere from 100 to 120 years for Noah to complete this project. So we know that he trusted God completely, knowing full well that God would do exactly what he said he was going to do. But just as God warned Noah of what was coming, so also has he warned us. Okay, He has spoken to us through his preserved word, and he has warned us about a future time of judgment, one that has not yet taken place, but that I really do believe will be soon. All right, we read in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 through 17 about the rapture of the church. Now at that time, God will remove all of Jesus Christ's believers and followers from this earth. Now this is an event that can happen at any time. Okay, it could happen today, even at this very minute. And as soon as that event does take place, that is when God will begin to pour out his righteous judgment onto the inhabitants of this earth. Except this time, God's judgment will not be in the form of a global flood. All right, this time, his judgment will be in the form of a seven-year tribulation period. Matthew 24, verse 21 says, For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world, to this time, no, nor ever shall be. It's almost impossible to describe how bad a time this is going to be. And yet, even though God, even though God has given us clear warning in His Word about what will take place, most people today are still living just as the people of Noah's time did. Most people these days are completely indifferent toward the prophetic signs given to us right in God's Word. These people are just going along with their business-as-usual mentality, okay, completely unaware and uninterested about what God actually requires from us. Okay, they'll say, I, I just... They'll say, I just have to try to be a good person, right? I mean, God wouldn't judge me if I'm a good person, would he? Well, first of all, what makes you think that you are such a good person? Okay, after all, the Bible in Romans chapter 3, verse 10 says, As it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. We're all sinners. Okay, none of us are good People. None of us deserve everything that God has offered to us. Every single one of us deserves God's judgment. But because God is a merciful God and a loving God, He has provided us with a way, a way to escape the judgment that will come upon the inhabitants of this earth one day. And that way is His Son, Jesus Christ. If we put our faith in Jesus, and instead of having to endure a time of judgment like this world has never seen before, we will instead spend eternity in a heavenly paradise with Christ. If you have not yet accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, then I would urge you to do so today, okay? Trust Christ to save you. Understand that we are all sinners, and we are all in need of a Savior. God the Son, Jesus Christ, paid for our sins, yours and mine, with his precious blood on the cross. He was buried and rose from the dead on the third day. And all we need to do to be saved is to believe that Jesus, the Son of God, paid for our sins by his blood 
his death on the cross and his resurrection. Trust in him to save you, and he will. And then after that, start learning about what it means to live a Christian life by reading the Bible, which is God's holy and inspired word. I'm also going to leave a link below to one of my videos entitled How to Get to Heaven, in which I show, based on scripture, what it means to accept the free gift of salvation that God has offered to us. And as always, thank you for watching, and God bless.